Oh no! I was afraid something like this might happen sooner or later. Wild ants have managed to break into my home from the outside and have infiltrated the one room in my house I didn't want them to. No, not my bedroom. Though that would be quite unpleasant too. A wild colony of black crazy ants has invaded my ant room. This is not a good thing because I have several pet ant colonies in my ant room. And I know the black crazy ants are up to no good. I'll be needing your help and opinions in this episode and have lots of really strange and concerning things to show you including how they are holding one of my ant colonies hostage. I have no idea what I should do, but before taking your suggestions, please have a look at all the things I have to show you this week to help me save our beloved pet ant colonies of the Ant Room, here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, the black crazy ants were everywhere. And truth is, I actually don't know how they got into my ant room, why they're even here, and the strange project they seem to be up to, which I'll be showing you later. But the first thing I noticed was how they were holding my ants hostage. Keep on watching until the end as I have lots to show you, and I'll definitely be needing your suggestions regarding possible solutions. So this is how it all went down. Last week I had moved my fire ant colony, named the Crimson Knights, into their new home, a terrarium I call Fire Alley. The former terrarium of my now larger marauder ant colony, the Leviathans, whom you will get to see an update on later. But after feeding them a roach as a housewarming gift, and noticing the fire ants were not emerging to eat it, I began to wonder what was up. The colony had moved into a test tube under the giant dinosaur skull I had placed in their tank. And opening it up, I was shocked to see that the fire ants had strangely disappeared. At first I thought they escaped, but then I noticed that nope, the fire ants had just dug their initial tunnel deeper and away from the glass, to a place we couldn't see them. That was fine with me. But then I wondered why they weren't emerging for food. And that was when I noticed the visitors. Black crazy ants. No. So if you're new to the world of ants, Black crazy ants are some of the world's most notorious invasive ants. They form huge super colonies that don't war with each other if more than one colony meet. They actually join forces. On top of that, they are polygynous, which means black crazy ants have more than one queen to the colony. And in fact, they can have thousands of egg-laying queens. If that's not enough, black crazy ants don't need to have nuptial flights to mate as virgin queens can mate with their biological brothers within the nest without the ancestral negative impacts of the genes of their young occurring. All of these traits make black crazy ants some of the world's most prolific, successful and dangerous invaders in the ant world. They're also notorious at killing other ants and my heart dropped when I saw that they had infiltrated Fire Alley. It didn't seem like the black crazy ants had found their way into the Crimson Knight's nest yet. And my guess was that the fire ants had successfully blocked the entrance from the black crazy ants. This was both a good thing and a bad thing. Because how could our Crimson Knights emerge to feed? I blocked the whole opening at the base of the dino skull with a cotton ball for extra precaution. But as I looked into the terrarium, I noticed the black crazy ants seem to have some interesting plan in progress. Have a look, guys. At first I thought I was mistaken and that the black crazy ants had found the fire ants brood, carrying brood out and back to the nest, to wherever they were stationed. But upon closer inspection, it wasn't fire ant brood they were collecting. It was grains of sand from around the terrarium, and you guys won't believe where they were bringing it. to the opposite side of the counter, right at the foot of the AC ant tower housing our Dracula ants. 
Now, thankfully, the AC Ant Tower is designed to keep wild ants, like these, out and protect our ants within. The Dracula ants were safe, guarding their brood pile. The Dracula ant colony was now larger than before and was ready for a new larger home soon. But after seeing the black crazy ants swarming and invading the ant room, I think I'll have to wait on that move. The Dracula ants are safer where they are now. But guys, what do you think the black crazy ants are doing here? Why grains of sand, which aren't even edible? And why are they dumping the sand here at the foot of the Dracula ant farm? It was all a strange mystery to me. But then, my mind began to think of the safety of my other ant colonies. It was time to do an ant farm check around my ant room to make sure the black crazy ants weren't attacking my other ant colonies. I approached Aranyani's Bend, terrarium home to my large colony of trapjaw ants. I was happy to see that my trapjaws were safe and that the black crazy ants did not seem at all interested in trespassing into these territories. I wasn't surprised as our trapjaw colony is huge now with a couple thousand workers and I have no doubt in my mind they could truly put up a fight against the black crazy ants. Next, I checked up on the massive terrarium kingdom of our Blades of Midas, our golden spiny ant colony. Thankfully, I also did not find black crazy ants in this tank. Despite the ground being littered with roach bodies, which the ants devour daily, the black crazy ants would not dare enter these lands. Our Blades of Midas are much too aggressive and their numbers much too great for the black crazy ants to stand any chance at victory. Thank goodness. But then, I approached our Leviathan's tank, new home of our Marauder Ant colony, named the Leviathans. I already knew this colony had truly grown in size, as they had eaten a lot and have had two weeks to enjoy their new spacious home with lots of digging space. The exposed side of the nest portion had some impressive tunnels. But what about the covered side of the nest? I wondered what it looked like inside. I was hoping I wouldn't find a swarm of black crazy ants waging a giant war against the Leviathans. There was only one way to find out. I opened up the tank to check up on the nest. AC family, as I shone my flashlight at the ants, I was spellbound by the beauty of the Leviathan's nest. In all my years of ant keeping, I can honestly say never have I ever seen an ant nest so beautiful in my life. It was an utter dream to see the configurations of brood, all organized by age, in neat chambers connected by smooth walled tunnels, with ants running through them like blood cells in arteries. My ant-loving heart was in awe at the splendor of the Leviathan's Nest architecture. Have a look. was to see how humidity levels differed in each chamber and how little microclimates were achieved simply by the way the chambers and tunnels were planned. My guess was that air and moisture could move in a highly favorable manner in this nest and the ants could simply move the brood around in accordance to optimal humidity requirements. The lower tunnels were populated by soil creatures like springtails which helped break down the ants waste and poop. How neat to see bioactivism at work in this nest, like we were having a unique cross-section view of what the nests of this species would look like in the wild. I couldn't believe how lucky we were to witness such a thing of nature. Here was a room full of larvae. The colony had amassed a ton of larvae. Here's a pupae room. And look at that humongous super major pupa. Yay! The colony was officially producing super majors, 
i.e. the biggest worker caste in this species. It looked like most of the humid rooms housed the larvae, which I suppose means they are the most moisture-demanding life stage. I also knew that all the brood we were seeing here was simply the brood the ants chose to situate next to the glass. There was surely more brood stored deeper in the nest, at hidden places deeper into the digging medium, which was probably where they were hiding the queen as well, our titanic empress. I missed her dearly. But what was good to see was that it appeared as though our leviathans here were too established a colony now, with huge majors and super majors running around, and probably close to 500,000 workers. The black crazy ants would not dare enter these territories. The leviathans were much too powerful for that. Everything looked perfect within the nest, and it seemed the leviathans were safe. For now, at least. But that was more than I could say for our Crimson Knights. They were stuck, soon to be very hungry, and were in danger of being obliterated by a swarm of black crazy ants. What was I to do? I looked up above ground and noticed the anthill of the leviathans was starting to get pretty close to the top edge of the tank. I knew I had to scoop out some of that soil, lest they build an anthill to the very top and escape. And that AC family was when an idea came to me. So it seemed the black crazy ants were not interested in trespassing into the territories of, nor in getting into altercations with, the larger established ant colonies. They knew how to pick their battles, but were okay with invading Fire Alley because they could probably smell through the faint pheromones produced by the fire ants that they were a fairly tiny colony. The other terrariums had big colony pheromone smells. See where I'm going with this, guys? So. I scooped up some of the ant hill from the leviathan's nest, careful not to scoop up worker ants. I then headed over to Fire Alley. My plan was to dump this digging medium with the leviathan's big colony pheromones all over it into Fire Alley with hopes that it would scare the black crazy ants from the lands. I sprinkled the digging medium all around the skull. The black crazy ants suddenly began to dash around in panic, thinking they were in the presence of a massive ant colony they should probably be worried about. I continued to sprinkle more medium around the lands, and again, the black crazy ants went, as their name suggests, crazy. I particularly couldn't wait to sprinkle medium at this part, where the ants seemed to be mining the grains of sand, sprinkling in medium. And the ants went berserk dashing around in a mad panic, desperate to run away from the battalion of ants they thought were all around them. I decided to leave the tank and allow the black crazy ants to hopefully vacate these lands. And AC family, the next day, this is what I saw. Fire Alley, empty. No black crazy ants in sight. Yes, it worked! Yay! Now I knew this black crazy ant evacuation might not be forever. I fear the black crazy ants might eventually realize there isn't a huge colony in here and move right back in, especially when the leviathan pheromones fade. So we will need to rehome our fire ants soon. I'm working on plans for their forever home right now. But before that, perhaps we move them into an AC ant tower? Just to be safe, do let me know what you guys suggest. All of this showed me just how volatile the life of ants really is. Our fire ants being invasive themselves are not immune to the dangers of invasions from other ant species. Ants attack, compete with, and displace each other all the time in nature. But in this case, what were once the arch enemies of our fire ants, the leviathans, became their savior. I really hope this will become the start of a cool partnership between our fire ants and marauder ants. I love both colonies and hope they never ever come together to war. In my mind, they are allies. To reward our great leviathans, I gave them a special gift. A dead adult mouse. 
Oh, they're going to love eating this. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.